trend is your friend. And we are seeing if you keep getting higher and higher lows, I guarantee you, you will get higher highs. Gold has been on the rise, but just how high can it go? In today's episode, Lynette Zhang dives into the factors driving gold's ascent and what this could mean for your financial future. Whether you're a seasoned investor or just starting to pay attention, this is the insight you need to stay ahead of the curve. Curious about where gold is headed next? Stick around as Lynette uncovers the possibilities. And the specifics about the PCGS 3000 chart that I show you, which is a physical only market. So I'm gonna walk through this graph, but let's just begin because the story of this actually goes back to 33 when Treasury Secretary Wooden confiscated gold the last time, but put this little caveat in there where, where coins, pre-1933 coins, have rare and unusual value so that he and his friends could continue to accumulate gold without oversight when it was illegal to own more than five ounces of gold in any other way than this particular form. And they were not slapped at that time. They were just like this, a raw, raw gold coin. So let's go back to the chart and let me walk you through that history a little bit because the story really begins in the setup to 1971 when Nixon close that gold window as they say, but in reality handed over control of inflation to the central banks. And their job was to regulate the rate and speed. But general citizens were not allowed to own gold until actually 1986 is when we first started issuing gold coins again. So these are all pre-33 coins that you're seeing. It's just a few of them, but let's go back so you can see what the run-up was. This is the PCGS 3000, so this is the lower quality, not the super rare coins. Okay, physical only, and here we go. Pre-33 and foreign gold coins, let's see, I think I have one here, but this is more a story of that. Foreign gold coins, like this French rooster, were the only legal gold coins that you could hold any amount of, again, without oversight. So leaving them to be very, very private. What happened next was we shifted into the new fiat money cycle. I guess the government and the central banks thought that people had, because they worked very hard to get you away from thinking of gold as money. So we shifted into that cycle and what did we have? We had the greedy 80s. If you're my age and I'm gonna be 70 in October, if you're my age, you remember that with Dynasty and Dallas and the big shoulder pads and the big hair and everything was over the top and opulent and there were corporate raiders and everything was going you know, it was the greedy 80s. Greed is good, according to Gordon Gecko. So from Wall Street, greed is good. But that was really about getting us into the new system, thinking that it actually benefited us when in reality, it was purely a setup to the rest of the purchasing power demise that I talk about all the time. But let's go back to the chart. Now, Greedy 80s happened, Wall Street also got involved in these coins and they created indexes and they created funds of the pre-33 gold coins and there was gold fever because people were allowed to own gold again. So you can see this huge run up and spike in pricing. That set a top. We've talked about, uh, we've talked about the cup formation forever right? And here it is in physical collectible coin value. And you can see this right now, what happened in 2008, 2009, we had the great financial crisis. So 
there was a peak in 2009. And then, you know, what happens is people think everything is okay. Just like what happened with the, the stock market and all the roiling, and then they make it look like everything is okay in these fiat money markets by dispersing more of this, which reduces the value of the fiat money that's already out there, but not this. This goes up because this is sound money as opposed to debt-based government money. So you can see where during the financial crisis in 2007, 2009, it drove the physical market only up to a peak, though still not up to the 89 peak. You shift in, now we are shifting into the new financial system. So look at where we are. We've had a breakout in 2024. In other words, it went above this level where it was just flat here. It'll go and test this. It's still below the 2009 peak, but it's all well below the 1989 peak. Can you see that? So these coins are still below where they were during the last financial crisis. But what do we know? We know there's a whole lot more of this out there than there was at that time. And that means that the true fundamental value of just even one ounce of raw gold has gone up tremendously since 2009. Though the spot market doesn't reflect it and neither does the collectible coin market reflect it. You always want the lion's share of your money in an undervalued asset that's in a long-term positive trend. How do you know, independent about what anybody says, that these coins are in a long-term positive trend? It's because what we have here are a series of higher and higher lows. And I can't give you a whole lot of guarantees, but I can absolutely give you this guarantee that the trend is your friend. And we are seeing, if you keep getting higher and higher lows, I guarantee you, you will get higher highs. Is this cup going to come to conclusion? At some point, 100%, because it always does. And the formulas, and the, the formulas and what happens in these markets, way smarter, these patterns, these cup formations, way smarter than you and I are. But if you can learn to recognize them, then you can get into a position to absolutely take advantage of that. Do you think that 89 peak will be revisited? Personally, I'm a hundred percent certain. I am giving myself absolutely zero wiggle room as a technician. And not only do I think that 89 peak will be revisited, I think it will make it look like chump change. Because back then we were transitioning from a, only a quasi gold back system to a pure debt based system. Now we are going into, if they have their ways, this is why we have to come together in community and position into gold and silver. But now they're transitioning us into a full surveillance economy. What are you going to have that guarantees your privacy? Just like Treasury Secretary Wooten did back in 1933. The result is this coin market, this collectible coin market pre-33. And that is still, in my strong opinion, your very best protection in a sound money portfolio because it has a different classification than this gold eagle has, which this is money, right? This is in a different classification. This you can hold in an IRA. Whoop de doo makes it very easy to take away, doesn't it? This you can't, but frankly, they have the same gold content and this is all standardized. So why? And what are we seeing? Total gold demand reached the highest Q2 on record. So we are at the very beginning stages of a new gold rush and it's sweeping the world. Make no mistake about it. It's sweeping the world. What do you want? You want to be in a place 
where you get to hold your purchasing power, you get to hold it privacy, privately, you get it out of the system and decentralized that it is movable. You can put this in your pocket and take it anywhere in the world because the US coin market operates everywhere in the world. So you have to decide for yourself what we're doing, but look at the gold demand trend. It is clearly up, up, up in a way. And we're not even talking about the fact that the first half of this year, central banks bought more gold than they ever have on record. And why? For this reason, part of the sound money strategy is about holding your purchasing power intact because governments, municipalities, and others that have bought assets with debt, since the debt bubble has popped, guess what happens to those assets? Thanks for watching. If Lynette Zhang's insights on gold's potential have you thinking about your next move, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. The world of finance is constantly changing, and staying informed is key to making the right decisions. Keep following us for more expert analysis and strategies to secure your financial future. We'll see you in the next episode.